Lauren. Hi, Dania. Hi, Carrie Ann. Hi. Hi, Laura Lee. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy, happy Friday afternoon. Oh, good, Laura Lee. I just saw us go live. So hello to everybody in Facebook land. My name is Lynn, Reverend Lynn Laborde, my official title, but most people just call me Lynn. I have some really cute nicknames. Do you guys have people that give you nicknames? I've had nicknames from boyfriends for Boo, Smoochie, um, oh my God, Doodle, Lindberger Cheese Doodle became Doodle. Just funny little nicknames along the way, but I, I primarily answer to Lynn. Um, anyway, thank you all for being here. So today's topic is ESP enhancement. And the way that we do that is I'm going to have everybody, we're going to do something called the measuring of the clairs. So the clairs are these four extraordinary psychic abilities that everybody has. We have more than that, but there are four that I focus on. Clair audience, which is your ability to see spirit and see beyond the physical eyes. Clair audience, which is your ability to hear spirit beyond the physical ears. Although sometimes like the medical medium, Anthony William, he hears spirit of the most high as a voice that sounds like it's outside of him. Um, Claire sentience, which is your ability to feel spirit. So this would be like goosebumps or it would be, um, I don't know, you just like the temperature in the room shifts, gets really cold when they show up or things like that. Uh, and then there's Claire cognizance. Claire cognizance is kind of like the, 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 you know, the big one. It's where you just know information from spirit. And we have different reasons in different lifetimes and different incarnations and different experiences when we shut these down. So when I first started this, I was measuring people on a scale of zero to 10. And then we started to go zero to a hundred. And then we started to go zero to a thousand. And then we have people that are like, have really blown out. And what happens is when you go in and when you do a healing on a place where you had made the decision to close these gifts and abilities down and you release that, you recover these abilities. It's really extraordinary. So at some point, uh, I'm going to ask for a volunteer who's ready, willing, and able, and uh, will join me on this journey. So we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see, what else do I want to let you all know about this? So Claire, Claire audience is where you'll get messages from spirit. So have any of you, do any of you have that ability developed, Claire audience? where you know that you get messages from spirit. Okay. Jane, Dania, Lauren. Okay. So for me, it showed up when I was, Tanya's raising her hand. Thank you, Tanya. So cute. I had a girlfriend on another Zoom platform and every time she would just like raise her hand for anything, the screen would automatically put a hand raise. We, we still don't know why that happened. Um, but for me, the first time I remember Claire audience so clearly, I've told this story before. So if you've heard it before, bear with me, but it went like this. I was getting ready for work. It was a Friday and I was wearing uh, black stockings, black shoes, black skirt and getting ready to go to work. And I heard spirits say, and that was when you could get the little eggs in the little plastic. It looks like a plastic egg and there were stockings inside. They were called legs. And uh, there was legs and no nonsense that you could buy at like the local pharmacy or the supermarket. So, I had a you know, bunch of stockings and I heard this voice in my head say, take an extra pair of stockings. And I was like, why would I take an extra pair of stockings? I ignored it. I heard it a second time, take an extra pair of stockings. And I'm like, I'm not taking an extra pair of stockings. The third time I heard it, I knew, I knew enough that if you heard a message three times from spirit, like you needed to take action, right? Anybody have that? Like, you know, when it comes through three times, it's something you're supposed to do or say or something. So I take the stockings, put it in my purse, go off to work, don't think anything about it. My girlfriend, Mary Clayton, calls me and she's like, hey, you want to go to the Rusty Pelican for lunch? And it was Friday. So it was New England clam chowder, which is that creamy clam chowder that I love. And I was like, yeah, I want to go have clam chowder. So we go to lunch and the restaurant is like this kind of nautical motif, you know, wooden chairs, things like that. At the end of the meal, I go to take my tray and, you know, bust, bust my tray. And my stocking catches on the wooden chair and tears. Now I'm wearing black stockings. If you have nude stockings, sometimes it's like not a problem, right? But if you have black stockings, 
people are definitely going to notice. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm going out, you know, to meet friends after work. Good thing I have an extra pair of stockings in my purse, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't make this shit up. Like, you just, you can't. So I go to the bathroom, you know, take this one stockings off, put the other stockings on. And I'm like, wow, that's clairaudience. You'll get messages, whatever they are. Okay, clairvoyance. My, my, I had this one experience in Israel in 2009 when my clairs opened up like crazy. I was at the Mount of Olives, which is the graveyard that's across from the city of David. I put my hands on a gravestone. This golden shaft of light opens up, comes down. The being in the grave starts talking to me. And I'm like, oh, what's happening? What's happening? It opened up some kind of psychic gift for me. And all of a sudden I could talk to the dead. So I come back to America. I tell my sister the story. She tells her best friend, Jill. And Jill goes, I want your sister to talk to my dad. Jill's dad had passed over. So Jill and I get on the phone and Jill says, you know, I'd like a message from my father. And, you know, I didn't know what the rules were for being a medium or any of that stuff. And all of a sudden I start seeing all these images of giraffes, like, so many giraffes, wooden giraffes, glass giraffes, real giraffes, pictures of giraffes, 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 giraffes. And I said to her, he's showing me all these pictures of giraffes, like all these different kinds of giraffes, like little giraffe figurines, all these things. And she's like, giraffes, there are no giraffes. And I said, well, you know, he says that he, something like, you know, he says that he loves you and loves Mr. Brown, who's this dog that she has. And uh, when she sings happy birthday, Mr. Brown sings with her. So I see her, I hear her father like singing happy birthday to me, sounding like the dog, you know. And she's like, okay, whatever. She goes back to my sister and she's like, your sister, like, you know, forget about it. All she did was talk about your ass. Jill then goes and talks to her mom and she goes, you know, supposedly Pam's sister can talk to the dad. And I asked her to talk to dad, but she kept talking about giraffes. And the mom goes, oh, that's because your father and I have a collection of over 50 giraffes. She's like, hmm. She's like, where are they? And she goes, in the curio cabinet over there. She opens it up and sure enough, there are like all these giraffes. So spirit will come forth with messages for you. And it's when you do these readings, they want to like give evidence to prove that it's really them, right? And uh, so my sister calls me and she goes, okay, Jill's a believer. And I'm like, Jill's a believer. I'm a believer, you know? I kept going, what are, what are all these giraffes? So they'll come to you with images. They'll come to you with messages that you can hear either inside or outside your head clairsentience is so my girlfriend wendy goes at night you turn off all the lights but you turn on the the you turn on the light on your phone and you turn the video on and you can see orbs coming at you and i'm like orbs she goes yeah they're spirits orbs coming at you and i'm like well that's fascinating so I decide to do that and I, I see all these orbs and all of a sudden I'm like, who are you? And I hear my grandmother, my mother's mother. And she's like, it's me, darling. It was the cutest thing in the world. Gabriel, oh my God, this is a blast from the past. Gabriel is a friend of mine from when I lived in Los Angeles. So good to see you, sweet man. Um, hi, Bianca, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Tanya, good to see you. So what I've noticed is when spirits come in that way, I can feel them. like the room gets cooler. There's, um, you know, like I'll get goosebumps. I don't know. That's how it manifests for me. Do, do any of you have like an experience of like when spirit comes and you can tell? Yeah. Like you can just tell. And sometimes they'll come late at night and I'm like, guys, I'm so tired. Can we please do this another time? And then you'll feel their presence recede. But it's a way that you're kind of tapped into your senses. Then there's clear cognizance. And clear cognizance is just where you just know stuff. You, you've never read it, you've never learned it. I have a friend named Charlie Tedesco. Charlie teaches sacred geometry. And before Charlie became my friend, I went to one of his lectures and he talked about how he was a priest in the order of Melchizedek and I almost fell off my chair because the download, the, the clear cognizance that came to me, this just understanding, I was like, that's the order that Jesus was ordained into. And I was like, what? How do I know that? So it turns out that not only was Jesus ordained as a priest in the order of Melchizedek, 
But Melchizedek is who came to Avram and Sarai. And they, he said to Avram, you will be Abraham and you will be the leader of three nations. And he said to Sarai, you will be Sarah and you will give birth to a child. And she was in her 90s. You know? So you can just imagine the miracle that that was. Um, but Melchizedek and Metatron work in concert with each other to help us manifest everything, you know, physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, you know, here in the universe. So it turns out that when every Catholic priest or Christian priest, you know, or, you know, whether you're a um, Episcopalian or whether you're a Lutheran or whether you're a Catholic or, you know, boarding and Christian, any of them, they're also ordained into the order of Melchizedek because that was the order that Jesus was ordained into because he was of the bloodline of David and not the bloodline of Abraham. And to be a rabbi, yeah, anyway, that's how Jesus was a rabbi. And if any of you are watching The Chosen, which is, oh my God, what a gorgeous television series. You know, they're chronicling Jesus and his and his followers. And you get to see Jesus crying, you get to see him praying, you get to see him hungry, you get to see him with his mom, you get to see him, you know, with his friends, you get to see him play ball and drop the ball, you know. Anyway, so clear cognizance is where it just comes to you like a download kind of through the crown chakra. So when I work with someone and they've got a blockage, they can't see or they can't hear, we go into the third eye and we look at the third eye is the energy center that's, you know, between the eyebrows and the center of the head. So you go back about two inches. And if your clairaudience and your clairvoyance are blocked, we look to see what's been placed there to block it. If your claircognizance is blocked, we'll go into the crown chakra. And if your clairsentience is blocked, we'll look into the heart. And what'll happen is, so a woman comes to me and she's a phenomenal shaman, but her clairvoyance is blocked. So we take her to a past life where we find out that she was the medicine woman of this Indian tribe, you know, but she had lived really, really long because she knew how to make her, her, have herself have a long life. So all that was left of the tribe, the new leaders were like the younger generations, like two generations down. And they didn't kind of believe in her ways, you know? They were a little disrespectful, but she kept having this vision of these marauders that came and kind of wiped out the tribe. And she told them and they didn't believe her. And the day that she knew that this was going to happen, she goes and she hides in a cave and she comes back and the tribe's been wiped out. But the, the one, the people that were left said, you did this old woman, you made this happen. This was your vision. You manifested this. And they took two pieces of wood that were burning hot like embers and they put them on the, her eyes to burn her eyes out. And so she made the decision and they left her for dead. And they made the she made the decision to never use that spiritual gift again. So we have these reasons why we've closed these down. Does that make sense? So I teach a class that's called quantum healing. And in quantum healing, we teach, we use a technique that's called psychic surgery, which is how to go in and extract whatever it is that you use to block or close down these abilities. Um, we teach clearing the clairs, which is how to measure your clairs and then how to, you know, like move the dial. And um, we teach people how to read the Akashic Records, because when you go into the Akashic Records, you want all of your clairs to be wide open. Makes sense. You want to be able to hear and see and feel and know when you're in the records. And the Akashic Records are basically like the iCloud, the spiritual iCloud of every incarnation you've had that are happening simultaneously, because time doesn't happen in a li linear pattern. Time happens like a slinky in a spiral, kind of like the DNA. And if you're caught in a particular lifetime, it's like you're caught. There was this, uh, in California, there was a place called Magic Mountain. They had this ride where everyone would stand in this room that was a circle. There was a metal floor and the room would start spinning really quickly. And then through centrifugal force, you, you could stay on the wall, but the, the floor would drop out and you could turn sideways. It was, it was a trip. But if you get caught in a loop, like a, like a, a loop of incarnations, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, there's lessons you haven't learned. Like Earth is supposedly one of those where you can get caught in outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill. He's interviewing the devil and the devil says, people get caught in what's called hypnotic rhythm. And it's like a whirlpool when you, know, you can't get out of the energy of the whirlpool. Um, oh, Laura Lee, I'm sorry. I know it's so cold, oh my God. She's in minus 46 Celsius. It's really, really cold. 
think it's like equal to like minus 15 Fahrenheit. She's way up in Canada, like near the North Pole, like up there. In my mind, in, in my mind, that's where she is. Laura Lee is one of the precious beings that works with me in my business. So thank you for being here, Laura. Um, you know, it's cold when you, listen, I, I just shaved my head because I was, someone asked me recently, I was in a mastermind and she's like, what don't you want to do? And I'm like, I don't want to shave. I don't want to color my hair anymore. So I just decided at the tender age of 61 to shave it all off. And it's so freeing. I can't even tell you. So now I have beanies. <laughs> this is my beanie. And when I want to look like a Keebler elf, I go like this. And then I have one that's blue. So if I do that one, I look like a Smurf. <laughs> oh, and I've got a whole bunch of shirts now that have hoodies. So this is my, this is my new look. <laughs> but I actually, I like the hoodie on my neck because my neck gets cold, surprisingly. Anyway. Okay, let's see. What else do I want you to know? So I'm going to ask those of you who would want to do this, understand that we're we're public, um, we're on Facebook, this goes on my YouTube channel. So if, if one of you is willing, please drop a yes in the chat. Oh, Bianca, thank you. I love my new look. I feel, I don't know, I feel amazing. Somebody said to me, I can really see your African roots because I'm like 13% black. And they're like, oh, your nose is much bigger than I remember. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. <laughs> your eyes look so much bigger. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not hiding behind my hair. Anyway, okay, um, let's see what else. I have no idea where this journey is going to take us, but I'm going to guide you through this, you know, and, and we will see. So Laura Lee, my beautifully psychic Laura Lee, is going to read over the list. She's burning a little sage to clear the energy. And then we're going to, you know, look over the list, and I'm going to call one of you forth. We'll go through and we'll measure your clairs. And then uh, we'll look to see, understand that the more that you open yourself up to your clairs, the more that you open up yourself up to your clairvoyance and your clairaudience and your clairsentience and your claircognizance, you're actually elevating and you're bringing yourself closer to God. God, Allah, Brahma, Muhammad, like whatever the name of your God or goddess is, you know, the God of lamps or chairs or Buddha, you know, whoever your God is. Ultimately, you're your own God. So the truth is you're coming closer to your own higher self and you're releasing all the levels of ego that you've put in the way. Okay, so not only is it cold here in New York, it's windy. Right now we have 21 and the temperature is only going down. We're actually going all the way down to three degrees tonight. Whew, that's cold even for New York. Even for New York. I have to say though, it's been a very light winter as far as snow. It's been cold, but we haven't had a lot of snow. All right, Laura Lee, you got someone for us? Okay, this never happened to me before. Now I hear a name, but the person did not say yes. So I'm kind of trying to focus on the people that actually said yes. Okay. Whose name did you get? Lauren. Okay. Where is Lauren? Hi, Lauren. Okay. She's trying to unmute. Oh, can you unmute? Am I unmuted? Can yeah. you hear me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Oh, she muted herself. Yeah. Okay. Now, can back. you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't actually say yes, but um, I don't know why I was feeling I was supposed to be picked today. <laughs> so I just need a yes from you. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Listen, the only thing we can do in life is uh, trust. You know, we got to be able to trust ourselves. We got to be able to, please excuse me. I, I don't know if any of you are aware of this um, application. It's called Voxer. But when you're in a group with 20 or 30 people, especially women, it goes off like popcorn. 
And I will leave for a few minutes and I'll come back and it'll say 227 messages or it'll say 864 messages. And it's just, it's somewhat, there must be some discussion going on because it's blowing up right now. Anyway, okay. Uh, Okie dokie. So Lauren, you up for this, my love? Sure. Okay. All right, beautiful. Oh, it's Empire Day. That makes sense. I forgot. It's Friday. Okay. Thank you, baby. Um, we have a staff meeting after this. I got to fill you in on some stuff. Very cool stuff happening. Very, very cool stuff. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that Claire makes it. One of my, one of, one of our little work mates has a really, really bad case of COVID. It's actually her second. She said like, oh. hasn't been able to sleep, coughing like crazy. NyQuil's not working and a bad fever. So keep, please keep. Claire in your prayers. All right. So Lauren, is there a place, my love, where you can um, get a pen in it and something to write on? Sure. Okay. I have one right here. I need a pen. Beautiful. Oh. And for anybody who wants to try this at home, you are more than welcome to. Okay. All right, got it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take us on a journey of breathing. There's a, a breathing uh, technique that I like to do that takes us from beta to alpha to theta so that you're gonna get really, here's a beautiful thing. I love telling this story. It was a download that I had and it makes so much sense. When we're born, we're born into a theta state. So we're born into the theta state is also known as the state of hypnosis and we kind of get hypnotized by life over the first five years. Then we kind of get baked. So based on the teachers that we've had, the parents that we've had, the, you know, the, the siblings, the grandparents, the older brothers, like politicians, religious leaders, we get inculcated. We get downloaded with, this is how you are. This is how you're supposed to be. Do this. Don't do that. Precepts, you know, commandments. And by about five o'clock, a child is fully baked. How they think, how they believe, how they feel, right? And then most of it though, 90% of it is unconscious and subconscious patterning. So when we can get back to through hypnosis or through breathing to a theta state, we can start to dismantle some of that, okay? So, my love, I'm going to have you start by closing your eyes. Okay. I'm going to set my phone down. Okay. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. You won't be able to see me, but you'll be able to hear me. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay. All right. So take a beautiful inhale in through your nose. And then I want you to exhale through your nose as well. And as you do, I want you to start to drop your consciousness from your head down towards your heart. Take another deep, rich inhale in through the nose. Let it fill you up completely. And then as you exhale through the nose, continue to let your consciousness drift even more towards your heart, coming out of the head. Beautiful. Take another long, slow inhale in through the nose. And as you exhale through the nose, continue to drift down towards the heart. Beautiful. Next, I want you to inhale. Imagine inhaling white light, like prana, life force. It's called ki energy, like reiki, or aikido, or chi energy. You know, the Chinese call it chi. You breathe that white light in, let it fill you up. And then as you exhale, I want you to exhale darkness. And the darkness is worries, anxieties, concerns, thoughts, anything like that that's kind of had you distracted or bothered. Beautiful. Take another inhale in of that gorgeous white light. Feel how cool it is as it comes in through your nose. Let it circulate throughout the body. And then as you exhale through the nose, release any darkness. Okay. Take another inhale in through the nose. White light. Breathe that white light in. Breathe it in, breathe it in, breathe it in. 
and then exhale any darkness. So let it all go. And each time you're doing this, you're sinking even further and deeper into the heart. Okay. So now we've moved from beta, which is our conscious state, into alpha with the white light breathing. And now we're going to move us into theta with the golden breath. So I want you to inhale, golden breath. Inhale, golden light, like God's golden light. Breathe it in, breathe it in, breathe it in. Feel yourself from the top of the head all the way down to the feet. Gorgeous golden light. And then as you exhale, I want you to exhale that same golden light. And you're actually starting to activate the light body within the physical body. Okay, beautiful. Take another rich, deep inhale in of golden light. And then go ahead and exhale that same golden light. Take one more rich inhale in, golden light. And then go ahead and exhale that same golden light. And you've now come into a very, very nice theta state. So now I'm gonna need you to sit up because you're gonna write. And we're gonna do a measuring of your clairs. You're just gonna listen to your intuition on this. So the first question that I'm going to ask you is, on a scale of 0 to 100, at what level is your Claire audience? Don't second guess it. Just write down the first answer that comes to you. Okay. Okay. What number did you get? 22. Beautiful. Okay. Take another inhale in. On your exhale, on a scale of 0 to 100, at what level is your clairvoyance? What number did you get? Five. Thank you. Okay. On a scale of zero to 100, take an inhale in. And on your exhale, at what level is your clairsentience? Oh. What number did you get? 32. Thank you. And then finally, take an inhale in on a scale of zero to 100. At what level is your clear cognizance? What number did you get? Don't second guess it. Lauren, uh -oh. I think she may have frozen. Hmm. Lauren, are you still there? Oh. Okay, now she's back. Okay, you're you're muted. Can you hear me now? I can. So, what level was your clear cognizance? Fifty-five. Five. Okay, beautiful. All right. So we're going to take a look at your clairvoyance because that's the lowest coming in at a five. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. You can go ahead and put the phone down again because I'm going to have, we're going to do some interior work with you. Okay. 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 So I want you to sit down. Once again, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to take an inhale into your third eye. And on the exhale, I want you to imagine going back about two inches into the center of your forehead into a realm that is known as the cave of Brahman. It's an enormous cave. It's actually the seat of the soul. It's where you find the pineal and the pituitary glands and the third eye, which is the eye, the all seeing eye that sees inwards. And your clairvoyance is at a five. So there's somewhere where you've closed this down. 
So I want you to notice that there seems to be something that's covering the third eye. And I'm gonna ask you a series of questions and just tell me the answers that you get, the first answer that you get to these, okay? Okay. So what color is the energy that seems to be covering your third eye? Red. Thank you. What shape is it? Oval. Thank you. Is it flat or does it have some like spherical quality to it? It's flat. Okay, thank you. How big is it? Um, about twice the size of an egg. Okay. Of a chicken egg. <laughs> okay, thank you. Very good. How much would you say that it weighs? It's heavy. It's heavy. Thank you. Thank you. What temperature is it? Um, it's warm. Thank you. My love, I just want you to breathe. Because right now we're, we're contacting some old energy. Yeah, just breathe. Keep breathing. You're okay. Yeah. Good. Good. There, there's, a, there's an experience, there's a story behind why you close this down. And it's just coming to the surface, okay? Okay. Beautiful. My love, what material would you say that this oval is? It's like a really tight mesh. Okay. Thank you. And does it have any sensation or movement to it? No, none at all. Thank you. What is its purpose? Just allow yourself to be with it and keep moving. Uh, it feels like it's to hold me in, yeah. to keep me contained. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Keep breathing, my love, this is beautiful. Keep breathing. Okay. What are the feelings and emotions that are inside of it? Sadness. Okay, I want you to really let yourself feel the sadness. Yeah, breathe into it. The mind controls the body, but the breath controls the mind. And that's why it's so important. When we allow ourselves to feel things, we can release them. You can, you can pick up your phone if you want to. I just want you to have all the space to, you know, work, work through this process. This but the dog came in to help. Oh, my gosh, this is sad. I love that. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right, close your eyes again. Take another breath. What other feelings and emotions are trapped inside of it? Ask me again. What other feelings and emotions? So breathe back into the third eye. So that blockage that's there. That red oval, you know, oval egg type, like twice the size of a chicken egg. It's heavy, it's warm. It's like that mesh. What it feels it? black now. Okay, black now. Beautiful. So what happens is there's a layer that's red and when, you know, you, you've, you've cried through that and now you come to the black. Make sense? Uh-huh. Okay. So I want you to take a breath in and on your exhale, I want you to dive into the black and I want you to tell me what are the feelings and the emotions that are inside of it? 
It's anger. Thank you. Beautiful. So breathe into the anger. This is anger that you were not able to express. And just allow yourself to feel the anger. Just breathe into it. Beautiful. Breathe in. Actually dive into the anger. Let yourself really feel it. Yep, keep breathing. Keep letting yourself feel it. I'm sorry for what they did to you. Keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Keep breathing. Gorgeous. What other feelings and emotions are trapped inside of it? Breathe into that third eye. What else is there? My hearing feels feels muted. Okay, that's okay. Everything is is shifting right now. Everything is recalibrating. You have to understand that the, the, the Claire audience and the clairvoyance are so deeply connected that they happen through this portal of the third eye. So everything's being impacted. You're going to be amazed at the numbers afterwards. Let me see what happens with that. So take another inhale in, exhale back into that energy. What other feelings and emotions are inside of it? I just feel like I shut down. Okay. I just feel like I shut down. Okay. I want you to breathe into that. It feels lighter now. Thank you. It feels lighter now. Beautiful. Yeah. Everything in the universe is made of energy. E equals MC squared Einstein's theory of relativity is really the foundation for these right. techniques. And when you allow yourself to go back and feel what has been stuck, what has been blocked, what has been frozen, and you, you dive into it and you experience it, it, it frees you, it begins to lighten up. Beautiful. Take another inhale in. On your exhale, what other feelings and emotions are inside of it. I'm feeling tingly. I'm feeling tingly, okay. I feel tingly. Beautiful. So I want you to breathe into that and just allow yourself to feel tingly. Hmm. Beautiful. Another inhale in. And your exhale, what other feelings and emotions are inside of it? I'm not feeling anything. Okay, gorgeous. I feel like numb. Okay. So take an inhale in and on your exhale, I want you to surround this oval with a field of love. Imagine like God's golden light completely encasing it, cir and circling it, surrounding it with a field of love. 
extend love to it. Beautiful. Were you able to completely do that? Yes. Yes. Or just take another inhale in. And now on your exhale, I want you to very gently and very easily glide it out of the middle of your head. It's going to come right through the third eye. It's actually going to go about three feet in front of you. Very, very easy. Just glide it all the way out, all the way out, all the way out. Beautiful. Did it go all the way out? Yes. Good. Another inhale in. And on your exhale, turn it white. And if you turn it white, the entire thing disappears. It just dissipates. There it goes. Now I want you to ask one of the fairies to borrow her fairy wand, and I want you to tap that place in your third eye where that energy was trapped. And the fairy dust that comes off of the fairy wand is going to completely your clear audience and your clear audience. It's going to allow you to see and to hear from spirit at a whole new level. Oh. Right. Take another breath in. And we're going to measure your clairs again. You ready? Okay. On a scale of zero to 100, at what level is your Claire audience? First number that comes to you. 35. Beautiful. On a scale of zero to 100, at what level is your clairvoyance? Fifty. Thank you. On a scale of zero to ten, sorry, zero to a hundred, at what level is your Claire sentience? Oh, oh. seventy-five. <laughs> beautiful, 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 beautiful. And then on a scale of zero to one hundred, at what level is your Claire cognizance? Eighty-two. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, How you doing? I'm, I'm good. I feel lighter. I feel uh, relief is what I feel. Yes, exactly. So your clairaudience moved from 22 to 35. Your clairvoyance moved from 5 to 50. Your clairsentience moved from 32 to 75. And your claircognizance moved from 55 to 82. Yeah. <laughs> so that's amazing. Everything's resetting <clears throat> and your abilities are, are opening up really beautifully. Thank you, my love. That was gorgeous. Thank you so much. Um, how to excuse the dog. I wasn't expecting him to come in, but he kept pawing at me. <laughs> no, listen, he, he was being your protector. He could tell you were upset. It's all yeah, good. yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, that was that was so amazing. Thank you. You're very well. Thank you. <laughs> very, very welcome. My delight. My absolute delight. So, and I kept feeling all week that all week um, when I saw your event candle calendar, some just kept telling me to join this one. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Oh, I'm glad I did too. Thank you so much. Yeah, very welcome. <sighs> So if any of you would like to experience this, please come back another time. If you didn't get a chance to go today, if you want to learn how to do this for yourself or others, we have classes where we teach these techniques. They're very, very simple to use and to apply. And I just want to thank all of you for being here on this glorious yet cold Friday afternoon. I'm heading into silence for Shabbat at 5.13. I'll be silent and fasting for 24 hours, spending some time with God, which I always love. Laura Lee just dropped the link if anyone's interested. We've got a class that's actually coming up um, in February. February? February? Yes, we're starting it on February 21st. I'll be teaching this class. 
Um, I have a lot of student teachers who've been teaching classes, but I'll be teaching this one. So if that's anything that you like to do, take a look it's on the website. Sending you guys all the love in the world. Shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom. Much peace, much love. Thank you for coming and being here. I love you all. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, babe. I love you. Love you too.